Okay, folks, I'm teaching you how to complete the square. Some of you have asked for this quite often, so I'm going to put this video clip up for you. Okay, now the traditional way of completing the square is to look at what you've got given to you. Is it one side zero, like the second one is, or is the one side equal to y? If it's equal to y, unfortunately, I cannot get rid of my leading term. Here, I can divide everything by 2 and have a leading term of 1 because the x value is 0. Okay, so let's start with the top. So the first thing we do traditionally is we remove the 3. So I'm going to bring in a square bracket. I'm left with x squared minus 2 divided by 3x. Leave a bit of space and then at the end I'm going to say plus 1 third. Okay, so now this is the step that completes the square. I need to take 2 over 3 and I need to halve it. If I do that, I can see that I'm left with a third. So I add 1 third squared and because it's not an equation but an expression, I need to subtract the third squared that I've added. Okay, now remember, this is the step that completes the square for me. So I get 3 times, and in this bracket I'll have x minus a third, all squared, minus 1 over 3 squared is 1 over 9, plus then, I'm going to write this as 3 over 9, because I need to add those two fractions, I need the LCD. Okay, so now the 3 can go in. I get 3 times x minus a third all squared. And here I have plus 2 over 9. But I'm multiplying the 3 in. And 3 goes into that 9 3 times. Okay, so there's the completion of the square if the one side is equal to y. If the one side is equal to naught, it makes it a tad bit easier or cleaner to do because I can divide the 2 away. But it doesn't really change much. So I get x squared plus 5 over 2x. Now remember, this is equal to 0. So I'm going to throw the 3 over, make it a positive 3. But remember, I divided that 3 by 2. Now I need to find out what am I going to add to both sides. And now what I'm adding, I've got a square. So my middle term is 5 over 2. So I've got to take the 5 over 2 and I've got to times it with a half, which leaves me with 5 over 4. So I'm adding 5 over 4 squared here and 5 over 4 squared on the right-hand side of that equation. So on this side, I'll stuck, I'm stuck with x plus 5 over 4, all squared, which is 3 over 2, plus 25 over 16. The LCD on the right-hand side is 16, so I need to times this with 8. I times that with 8. becomes 24 plus 25 over 16, which is 49 over 16. Okay, so I'm very close to solving this. Remember, this is x plus 5 over 4 all squared, which is equal to that. Okay, now I have to take the square root both sides. So I get x plus 5 over 4, and don't forget this is plus or minus. The root of 49 is 7. The root of 16 is 4. I kick the 5 over 4 to the other side, I get minus 5 plus or minus 7, all of that over 4, which gives me two answers. x is minus 5 minus 7 is minus 12 over 4 is minus 3, or x is minus 5 plus 7, which is plus 2 over 4, which is indeed a half. Okay. I want to show you an alternative. You can see these things have ugly fractions in them. Okay, so the alternative is based on multiplication with the fraction that you're going to add. You're going to multiply the fractions away. So first of all, 
is to find out what the value of a is. The value of a is 3. Okay, so immediately write down what is 4 times that a. 4 times a will then be 12. And then what is b? b is minus 2. If I have to have b squared, which I will have to be over here. Remember this is 2a. So that makes 4a squared. And this makes b over 2a, which is b over 2a, all squared. But you'll see how it pans out now. The b squared is then minus 2 squared, which is 4. So look at what I'm going to do now. First of all, I'm going to multiply both sides by 12. So I get 12y is equal to 36x squared minus 24x plus 12. Not a fraction in sight. Okay? Then I'm going to add the b squared, which is 4. And I'm going to subtract the b squared, which is 4. So these three terms, that one, this one, and that one, completes the square, and that becomes my constant. So have a look. If I group those three terms together and I factorize, I get 6x minus the square root of 4 is indeed a 2. Now let's see if that works out. That's all squared. Okay, 6x squared is 36x squared, 6 times 2 is minus 12x, gives me minus 24x, and that squared is 4. So I'm left with plus 8 on the outside, 12 minus 4. So this is 12y. To get to y, y will then be 1 over 12, 6x minus 2 all squared plus 8. And you've completed that square. Now what's nice about doing that folks, what I've done over here, is what does completing the square do for you? This 12, sorry, I must also divide by the 8. Don't forget it divides the 8 and it divides the bracket. Completing the square takes every x that is running loose in your uh, expression and it contains it in a bracket with a square over that bracket. And that's exactly what I wanted it to do over there. Now if I look at the bottom one, the second part, let's do that second one on the side over here. 4a will be 4 times 2 and that is 8. b squared is 25. So first of all, I times everything with 4a in this equation. So 8 times 2 is 16x squared. 8 times 5 is 40x that I've got to add. Now I'm going to be clever and I'm going to leave a bit of space here. And I'm going to throw the 3 over and times it with the 8 to give me 24. So that 24 comes from this 3, having thrown it over the equal sign and times in it with 8. Now all I've got left is to add 25 to each of the sides. Now look at this. This is 4x plus 5 all squared. The square is completed, which is equal to 49. Okay, what am I doing? I'm solving for x. Not a fraction in sight. Look at how ugly this looked. There's a lot of fractions, and you guys find fractions a little bit more difficult. So let's try and use this approach. Then you will not slip over silly mistakes. If I take the square root both sides, I get a 7 on the right-hand side. So 4x is minus 5 plus or minus 7. This leaves me with 4x as minus 5 minus 7, which is minus 12, which makes x equal to minus 3. Or then 4x equals minus 5 plus 7, which is 2, and therefore x is equal to a half. The left-hand side is nice. I like something that looks as beautiful and as elegant as that. But if you battle with fractions, folks, use the approach, the 4ab squared approach, I call that. It avoids the fractions and it helps you 
to complete the square in a much easier way. I hope that helps you.